The nose consists of the nasal skeleton housing the nasal cavity, the most superior part of the respiratory tract. In addition to olfaction, the nasal cavity traps and removes pathogens and particulate matter from inspired air, warms and humidifies this air, and drains the paranasal sinuses and lacrimal ducts. The external nose's superior end, the nasal root, is continuous with the forehead. Then there's the bridge, the dorsum nasi, and the apex, which is the tip of the nose. Your nostrils are called the nares. The nasal columella is the tissue that separates the nares, connecting the nasal tip to the nasal base. Nares are piriform openings to the vestibule of the nasal cavity. The nasal septum binds them medially, while the alanasi, which are cartilaginous wings, bind them laterally. The external nose's skeletal structure has both bony and cartilaginous components. Here we see the nasal bone, part of the frontal bone, and part of the maxillae. The cartilaginous component is made up of two lateral cartilages, two alar cartilages, some smaller alar cartilages, and a septal cartilage. Small muscles insert into the external nose, innervated by branches of the facial nerve. The procerus muscle depresses the medial eyebrows and wrinkles the skin of the superior dorsum. The nasalis is a sphincter-like muscle with a transverse and an alar part. The transverse part of the nasalis assists the procerus. The alar part of the nasalis flares the nares, assisted by the depressor septi nasi. The external nose receives sensory innervation from the trigeminal nerve. The external nasal nerve is a branch of the ophthalmic nerve that supplies the skin of the dorsum, nasal ally, and nasal vestibule. The intraorbital nerve is a branch of the maxillary nerve which supplies the lateral aspects of the nose. Motor innervation for the nasal muscles of facial expression is supplied by the facial nerve. The skin of the external nose gets arterial supply from branches of the maxillary and ophthalmic arteries, while the septum and alar cartilages receive blood from the angular artery and lateral nasal artery, both branches of the facial artery, which is in turn derived from the external carotid artery. Venous drainage is via the facial vein, which continues into the internal jugular vein. Filled with air, four kinds of paranasal sinuses extend from the nasal cavity. Paranasal sinuses are thought to have the following functions. They humidify inspired air, lighten the head, support immune defense, and add resonance to the voice. They are named based on the bone in which they're found, frontal, maxillary, sphenoid, and ethmoid. All the sinuses drain into the nasal cavity, as openings to the paranasal sinuses are found in the roof and lateral nasal walls. The frontal, maxillary, and anterior ethmoidal sinuses open into the middle meatus at a crescent-shaped groove called the semilunar hiatus. The middle ethmoidal sinuses drain onto the ethmoidal bulla. The posterior ethmoidal sinuses drain at the level of the superior meatus. Meanwhile, the sphenoid sinus is the only sinus that doesn't drain through the lateral walls, but instead through the posterior roof. The nasal cavity runs from the vestibule of the nose to the nasopharynx. It has three sections, the vestibule, respiratory region, and olfactory region. The vestibule is the area within the nares. The respiratory region is lined with respiratory epithelium and contains the nasal conchi and meatuses. The olfactory region, found at the apex of the nasal cavity, is lined by olfactory cells, which have olfactory receptors. The lateral walls of the nasal cavity have three sets of conchi or turbinates, projections made of curved shelves of bone. The conchi increase the nasal cavity's surface area, increasing the amount of inspired air that comes into contact with the walls. They also disrupt fast laminar airflow, making it slow and turbulent instead so it can stay in the nasal cavity for longer and become humidified. As discussed, the paranasal sinuses drain into the nasal cavity, but there are also other structures that open into the nasal cavity, the nasolacrimal duct and the eustachian tube. The nasolacrimal ducts drain tears from the eye, opening into the inferior meatus. The eustachian tube opens into the nasopharynx at the level of the inferior meatus, helping the middle ear equalize with atmospheric air pressure. The ethmoid bone features the cribriform plate, a portion of the roof of the nasal cavity with very small perforations. Fibers of the olfactory nerve pass through these perforations. The sphenopalatine foramen is found at the level of the superior meatus, connecting the nasal cavity and the pterygopalatine fossa. The sphenopalatine artery, nasopalatine, and superior nasal nerves transmit through it. The incisive canal connects the nasal cavity and incisive fossa of the oral cavity, allowing the nasopalatine nerve and greater palatine artery to pass through it. 
The nasal cavity has a rich vascular supply, since it needs to humidify and warm inspired air. It receives blood from branches of the internal and external carotid arteries. The internal carotid arteries' first branch is the ophthalmic artery, which then branches into the ethmoidal arteries. The anterior and posterior ethmoidal arteries descend into the nasal cavity through the cribriform plate. The external carotid artery has several branches that supply the nose. The branches include the sphenopalatine, greater palatine, superior labial, and lateral nasal arteries. These arteries anastomose with one another, especially in the anterior portion of the nose. This spot is called Little's area, or Kieselbach's area. The nose's veins tend to follow arteries. They drain into the pterygoid plexus, facial vein, and cavernous sinus. Since your nose is used in olfaction, innervation is divided functionally into special and general innervation. Sense of smell is a kind of special sensory information, and it is carried by the olfactory nerves to the olfactory bulb, a part of the brain on the superior surface of the cribriform plate over top of the nasal cavity. Meanwhile, general sensory innervation to the septum and lateral walls is delivered to a branch of the maxillary nerve called the nasopalatine nerve and a branch of the ophthalmic nerve called the nasociliary nerve. The trigeminal nerve supplies the external skin of the nose. Fun fact of the day, the medical term for nosebleed is epistaxis. Looking for an anatomy atlas? Look no further than the Kenhub atlas. This atlas features carefully curated illustrations on every anatomy topic neatly organized and color-coded. And Ken Hub's atlas is the first anatomy atlas to feature diverse anatomical models, promoting inclusive and equitable learning. This beautifully illustrated, clear and concise book is compact enough to take anywhere. The digital version, with all the same features, is available for Kindle and Apple iBooks. And for an even more comprehensive overview of anatomy, the book features QR codes at the end of each section, seamlessly linking to online resources on KenHub.com to further enhance your learning. Check out the link in the description to purchase it for yourself.